Yo, what's going on guys? Riot here checking out this awesome new 10 ways to die in Jurassic World or is it 8 ways to die in Jurassic World? The title and the thumbnail contradict each other, but I'm freaking super excited. Go Goji Center like DM me asking me to record a couple lines for this, so I'm sure it sounds horribly cringy and awful. I freaking hate hearing myself like on YouTube videos, which is, I know it's ironic, but still. Either way though, definitely subscribe to them down below. They're freaking awesome. They like reach out to try to include people in their videos because they're just the coolest dudes ever. And leave a like, subscribe down below too, and let's get it going. <laughs> This is freaking sweet. Oh my god, they got a new intro. Previously on this series, we visited an island full of bloodthirsty creatures who can put a brutal end to anyone who crosses their path. Except but me. Today, we will be visiting the most dangerous island in the Jurassic Park franchise. Welcome to Isla Sorna, the host of some of the most brutal deaths ever seen, oh. featuring a crazy roster of oversized and savage creatures that can erase you from history in a split second. I just watched Lost World last night. This is so freaking perfect. Join us as we put four mischievous <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm pretty sure I'm this guy with the mohawk right here, and I couldn't help but notice that as soon as the video starts, he's scratching his nuts. In a split second. Join us as we put okay, four Okay, see, it wasn't just me. He's definitely scratching his nuts. Then you guys could not have gotten me more perfectly. I also scratched my nuts. Previous test subjects through extremely brutal simulations. Oh all my just god. To show you what could happen if you butt heads with any of these dinosaurs. This video will get pretty graphic. This is like so a dream make come sure true. You sit back, hold on to your butts, and get ready to witness <laughs> the absolute worst eight ways to die in Isla Sorda. Before we get started, we're quickly going to show you guys a fun little experiment hey! we did with this product. Our sponsor Raycon provided us with these neat earbuds and... Oh my god, is that the freaking... That's the new Fimuto model I dropped. ...to see if they fall off. And they didn't. These things fit perfectly and are so comfortable that you'll forget they're on thanks to their really comfortable gel tips. He blurred his eyes. Is he a serial killer or a shapeshifter? Once you put these on, your everyday life will be enhanced with crisp, high-quality audio and last for a long time thanks to their 8-hour playtime and 32-hour battery life. No shit, I did a Raycon sponsor a few months ago, so m mine's already done. But, like, legit, I use these. I I'm not even paid to say this. I just literally, like, my Apple headphones have no bass, dude. They have no bass whatsoever these suckers are like all base it's freaking awesome like they're the best things to listen to in the gym so I, i'm literally just supporting theirs like you should if you're ever gonna get headphones you should support their sponsor because these bitches is toy the immersive i'm allowed to play through though so good that it's no wonder they got spammed with 48,000 5 five-star reviews so if you were planning to buy some other overpriced high quality earbuds somewhere else stop looking save your hard-earned money because raycon will i just want to, <laughs> I want to keep talking it up also <laughs> at half the price of the other premium audio brands but if this discount wasn't good enough for you click on the link below or go to buyraycon.com slash goji to get 15 percent off your raycon purchase if you need new i'm gonna let it play out i'm a fan already wrecked your bank account raycon's got you Thanks to Raycon for supporting this channel, and now, let's get back to the episode. Yeah, so if you listen to metal or club music, techno, anything with any bass whatsoever, them's the shits. Woo! Whoa! Yo, what is this place? God damn it. Okay, hearing myself, uh, <laughs> that's the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. I need alcohol for this. And why am I wearing this? Looks like some sort of facility. I don't like the look of this. Nah. This is gonna be exciting. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. <clears throat> Welcome <laughs> to the Goji Center simulation platform. You guys have been selected amongst thousands of applicants to serve as demonstration assets for a documentary. We ask that you stay put and please cooperate. Note that these are just simulations and you will be given the chance to respawn at the end of this session. The Goji Center Research Facility thanks you for your cooperation. No, I shut the f*** up. Whoa, what did he do? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I don't want to do this anymore. He said we are in a Goji Center video. Do you have any idea what they do to people in Goji Center video? Number one. I just read it on record, on record, because it's going to raise on record. I'm actually 6'2", so, all right, because uh, <laughs> they, they gave me the shortest guy, so I just got to put that out there. What they do to people in Goji Center video? I don't Number know why that was important, but it was. Stampeded. <laughs> if you've seen Jurassic Park The Lost World or Jurassic Park 3, you'll know that this place is full of herbivores. A lot of them. But the problem with there being a whole bunch is the possibility of being caught up in a stampede. 
Meet the Parasaurolophus and the Corythosaurus. I've always maintained that freaking scene with the Parasaur Stampede is infinitely more dangerous than any raptor encounter ever, dude. They're, they're like mega cows. Hadrosaurids that coexisted in the open plains of Isla Sorna. A single one of these wouldn't do too much, but if you're stupid enough to casually walk in the middle of a herd of I guess these, it was a galley herd. Up trouble, but still. Prepare to die. Being in the middle of a stampede would make you run the risk of two things. Getting trampled, obviously, but also getting punted across the field while screaming in intense pain. <laughs> Let us explain. <laughs> we'll guess that many of you haven't seen a horse go right through a human being, but here it is. Sorry. Oh, God. Now, an animal that is well over 20 feet in length running at high speeds will do more than just send you flying, but break every single bone in your upper body, including your ribs. Now, there's more to this. Rib fractures such as these are known to penetrate the lungs themselves. One time I had a floating rib fracture, not even a penetrating one, and that was the most painful thing in my goddamn life. I couldn't imagine, because you gotta breathe, dude. It's right near where your breathing crap is. Flooding your lungs with blood. Oh God! You'll be left on the floor unconscious from the shock, but won't be able to wake <laughs> up due to your inability to breathe properly. Oh. Slowly but surely, you die. Unless you get stomped on the head, of course. Her face is gone. Number two, nipped apart. Uh, I feel like nipped apart is like the least masculine way to die, right? Like. I feel like I could take on a thousand Those copies. Those of you who remember this film will also remember Dieter Stark. Yeah, this and how he was sent to the afterlife in a very messed up way. The culprit, Compsognathus, or more commonly known as Compies, were one of the smallest dinosaurs in this franchise and also the most fragile. But don't let these little guys fool you. Together, these small dinosaurs can bring down something as large as you. These guys are armed with small but sharp teeth in their jaws, claws sharp enough to get a good grip on you, and friends that can cut you down one slice at a time. But the real killing comes after you eventually succumb to what is known as swarm tactics. Oh, shit. The practice of literally swarming the prey or enemy until they are eventually overwhelmed and can't do anything about it. As we can see here, Dieter Stark fell prey to these little guys, not because they were stronger than him, but because there were more of them. I don't mean to dispute such an amazing film or anything. I, I, I'm, I feel like a part of, like, a, uh, he was tumbling around, falling down and stuff. I, I feel like that played a huge part to this. If I was in a wide open area, I could, I would be punting those suckers till, like, my feet were bleeding. So, I don't know. I feel like this guy was just maybe a dingleberry. A good number of these will eventually nip you until you bleed out. And eventually, after so much nipping, one compy will be able to cut into any one of your veins, which causes you to bleed. I guess that's true. Faster. If they start picking into your Combined wrists, you're done. Heart beating, you'll lose consciousness in no time. <laughs> your blood probably flows a lot faster when your heart's pounding, isn't it? So if they were to nip open a vein on your wrist and you were freaking out, yeah, I'll bet you bleed out like crazy. And then it adds up. I can see it. Outrageous. Get this thing off me. <laughs> Down you go, you sent <laughs> Number three, Claude. In the previous episode of this series, we were introduced to Isla Nublar's raptor variants. But one of the most interesting things about Isla Sorna is that it also housed different variations of velociraptors. In the Lost World, we were introduced to the tiger-patterned male raptors that oh, lived shit. in this zone of the island and specialized in preying on animals that wandered too deep in these grassy flatlands. On the other end of this island, we find an even more peculiar breed. Those are my Raptors favorite. A narrower snout, very sharp claws, Why is that me? and a really violent personality. Let's go back to the events of Jurassic Park 3 and use this dude as an example. Uh. Udesky. After getting ambushed and knocked down, this Velociraptor handicapped Udesky by clawing him on the back. Wait, why am I on the floor? Oh, God damn it. What's that? I didn't, I didn't know, it like, the... <laughs> I didn't know, like, the... I didn't know, like, the... It's hard to describe what this is. I don't know, man. I didn't necessarily sound like I was being eaten by a raptor, and that's my fault, but, like, honestly, honestly, how do you just voice record sounding like you're being eaten by a raptor? Like, how, how do you need to go, like, acting school for years and shit? Like, I don't know, man. Piercing deep. Still epic. Close <laughs> into the left lung. Leaving Udesky immobilized due to hemorrhagic shock, but not dead. These raptors left him alive in front of these people in an attempt to lure them down to the ground where they would get attacked. 
This failed, but the intentions were clear. After the humans were no longer a viable meal, this raptor finished off Udeski since he was no longer useful as bait. Brutal, right? The raptors on the other side of the island were no different, except these guys would lay low and ambush people using the cover of the tall grass, bagging people in astonishing numbers. Number four. I never even, I never even clicked in my head that they've evolved to use different hunting tactics on various sides of the island due to their environment. What a, what a freaking in-depth analysis. Bloody KO. We're going back to herbivores. Oh, for Packy, this one, for sure. The dinosaur we are about to show you yep. will kill you faster <laughs> than any raptor would. Meet the Pachycephalosaurus, a medium sized dinosaur that could potentially measure up to 15 feet in length and be as tall as a human. But this animal doesn't need to be this large to send you packing. In the film Jurassic Park The Lost World, we catch a glimpse of a small to medium sized Pachy that was being captured by InGen operatives or an attempt at that. This animal's very thick skull is attached to the vertebrae from the bottom inside. The, I'm sorry, I, I just remember, I had the coolest freaking toy when I was a kid ever, dude. It was like the Packy and Truck combination, and when you hit the side, the door popped out. God damn, that toy was so freaking sweet. What happened to it? Instead of the back. So when it lowers its head, it can absorb a much greater impact. In this episode, you will be on the other end of this impact. Those so are legit one of my favorite dinos. I just love them. Do to you? Let's bring in our test subject to demonstrate. Enough of this bullshit. I'm done. As you can see, a Pachycephalosaurus of this size would lower its head low enough to strike. I feel like your guts would explode out this your ass. Yeah. What, what do you right? mean lowering right? its head? Why can't I move? All right, that's enough. Don't aim there, if man. running at full speed, you hit him in the dick. <laughs> crush <laughs> through the pelvis, pulverize any oh, organs no, around no, here, no, and cause again. trauma, oh, which would oh, most oh. likely rupture your intestines. I guess that's better than what I'm thinking. I was like picturing like balls exploding out of his ass, just like gnarliness. This won't kill you though. Any strike on the chest would knock the air out of you, sink your broken ribs into your chest, and stop your heart. Death by dick explosion. This is how you die immediately if this small patchy can blow a hole this is the toy this head door, right there oh. believe he'll be looking right through your body after he's done with you number five squashed while it is true that a lot of these long-necked dinosaurs in jurassic park can easily snuff your lights out there's another dinosaur on this particular island that can Stego. push you and also send you flying Meet the Mementosaurus, oh, no. one of the largest sauropods in this franchise, which is capable of growing close to 100 feet in length. That chick is so screwed. Is made up by its tail. But how can such a slow, lumbering creature kill someone? Easy. Although this film did not show us how this Mementosaurus bags people, this game does. Ooh. Failure to accurately interrupt this animal's defecation will get you buried under a pile of shit. Well, it's the, it's the goddamn. <laughs> Observe how one Mementosaurus uses its full forward momentum to squish these guys inside this vehicle. This level, your objective yeah, is shoot to the dookie. crushed by this animal's strong legs. Nah, I'm good. I quit. I Standing quit. in the way of this vertical trajectory means that you probably won't even feel I your quit. bones I getting quit. crunched to bits <laughs> once its leg makes contact with your Ugh. skull. If getting stumped wasn't bad enough, these engineered Mamankosaurus had a long whip-like tail. Although different from the actual scientifically accurate Mamankosaurus, a whip like this is believed to be able to be swung so fast that the end of these tails could break the sound barrier. What? Meaning that being on the wrong side of this tail would tear you to pieces upon impact. The good news for you is that if you're hit on the right spots, you oh won't feel a thing. I don't want to do this anymore. Stop this right now. I'm calling my lawyer. No! Oh, oh yeah. god damn. No, don't, don't respawn this one, please. <laughs> 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 Number six, chomped. You cannot be serious right now. Come on, you guys clearly lied to the job description. You know what? Screw this voluntary thing. I wonder what's going to happen here. Paid. If this thing is going to eat me, I swear I'll report this place to the local authorities and shut you. This is the Ceratosaurus. I can see be eaten though. Intimidating looking animal, but picky eater armed with a mouthful of teeth capable of cutting up and eating something such as you in one gulp. Had these guys not rubbed poop on them prior to this guy pulling up, they probably would have suffered the same fate as the dude who contributed to this <laughs> pile of crap. Stay tuned to see what we are talking about. 
these muscular dinosaur jaws are wide enough to fit your entire upper body inside its mouth. Its strong neck muscles will allow this thing to rip your upper body up. Believe it or not, this method of killing won't kill you immediately. Ugh. You'll be able to look down at your lower body getting ripped away as you slide down this animal's throat. Did you imagine Once that? You lose enough <laughs> blood, you'll lose your consciousness and then die in pain. But there's another dinosaur in this island that actually kind of did this, but it was a lot more Oh, this brutal. poor bastard. Number seven, ripped in half. I just well, watched the scene. someone get torn up. No, but not like this guy. This unfortunate fella had the unlucky privilege of feeding not one, but two T-Rexes. In this section, we will discuss how this guy died and how it felt to die this way. I was gonna say, like, it was pretty, pretty self-explanatory how he died, but how it felt, how it feels to be ripped in half, now that is interesting. Just in case you ever ripped in half, you know, wanna know what you're in for. If you saw the I imagine it's just episode, like bleeding. Remember that we learned that a T-Rex wouldn't need to exert its entire bite force on a small human. A subtle bite would have done the trick. Same applies here. We're going to watch this in slow motion. First, we see how Eddie was lifted up with ease by his leg. And it just so happened that the T-Rex's teeth made contact with his tibia and fibula, possibly fracturing them both. Believe it or not, this was the most pain Eddie felt throughout this process. Well, that's Why? nice. Watch closely as he gets tossed midair and then with these huge jaws gets caught once again, but on the upper part of his body. Oh, yeah, he's dead. Oh, oh shit. Why do I have to play the part of Eddie? I better <laughs> Having this. many 6 to 12 inch teeth puncturing these areas oh, would oh. very quickly <laughs> shut you down. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry for distracting, but like, the script, it's like you die, and then I was like, what's, what's dying sound? I really should have watched a movie or something where someone dies first. I was like, I don't know what it sounds like to die, because I've never died before. Luckily for Eddie, he didn't have to feel the other T-Rex grab his other leg and rip it off. At first glance, this looks like an excruciatingly painful way to go, and it was, but not for long. The next creature on this list will boast many more ways to kill. Before we continue on, and while the spaghetti we legs. this mess, we're going to quickly go over some honorable mentions. In the previous episode, we discussed three dinosaurs with really messed up ways to cancel your family tree, but they also show up on this island, but different. Let's begin with Triceratops. My while favorite dinosaur. Woo! specimens were up to 30 feet in length, these Triceratops were a whopping 35 just two feet shorter than the juvenile Rex from JP3. Damn, bitch! Another oversized dinosaur here is the Stegosaurus. Those were huge, dude. approximately 33 feet, but in Isla Sorna, this thing was as long as a T-Rex. Yes, you heard that right. This thing was huge and a bit more temperamental. Perhaps the most interesting of these variations is the Carnotaurus. This is what it looked like in Isla Nublar, but according to the novelization of The Lost World, there were a couple of Carnos that looked like this. Oh, God! And these were able to blend in with their surroundings, making them all the more dangerous. Check out the previous episode, if you haven't, to find out the gruesome ways these things could kill. Time to move on to the next dinosaur. Is it over? I hope so. This place sucks ass. Bunch of freaking cops <laughs> doing comic So... Who here is not subscribed to Goji Center? Wait, no, no. I just saw my guy scratch his ass again. Does my guy have crabs or something? No, no, no. I was just kidding. I'm subscribed. Number eight, mutilated. In this island, there was one dinosaur whose mere existence disrupted the ecosystem. Ass crabs? Entire biome. The Spinosaurus. During the events of Jurassic Park 3, it is mentioned that this Spinosaurus was well over 40 feet long, and fully grown, it could have measured even longer. No, no, you don't even have to lie anymore. You can't lie to me, you goji sensor people. I know what y'all finna do to me. Y'all gotta feed my ass to that spino. Something very important Dude, to Dude, spinos look so cool. This Spinosaurus is completely different from the real world and scientifically accurate Spinosaurus we know today. Honestly, I get a thousand arguments a day over this people. Oh, no, Jurassic, no, scientifically accurate dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise. Like, yeah, dumbass. You ever, I'm sorry for the profanity, but I get in this argument a lot. It's like, did you ever watch any of the movies? Yeah, we got a part of its DNA, so we put a bunch of random animals in there, so it looks different, but we recreated it. And then everyone's like, that's not accurate. It's like, yeah, bro, it's like fucking half raccoon. Watch the movie. 
This Sorry. Shape and form has changed so much throughout the years that in a few days from now, this model will probably be outdated. It's the true. The point is, because this Jurassic Park Spino was reconstructed in this fashion, it is much better equipped to hunt down and kill fast-moving prey and kill larger dinosaurs such as this T-Rex. Meaning that that still so upsets far, me. This Spinosaurus is known to be the most dangerous dinosaur in this island. But let's go to the killing <clears throat> simulation platform. <laughs> Focus your attention <laughs> I on get these it. two weapons. It's long jaws and it's large, sharp claws. These jaws are much longer than the T-Rex's, allowing it to catch little creatures such as you a bit more easily on a horizontal axis. You bastards! I hate to- That's true, he's got those Which fishing teeth! Which happened to Cooper. The fast snap of these jaws would immediately crush your ribs and vertebrae. Your organs, including your heart, would have been obliterated due to the shock of these jaws snapping shut. But this animal has other ways to kill. Take a look at the size of these claws. A single claw is large enough to pierce a hole through your upper body. They're and a pretty the freaking beast. The blow, your corpse would be torn apart with a single <laughs> strike. Damn. But the real reason why this dinosaur is on top of this list is the fact that running away from this animal is almost impossible. In this franchise, the Spinosaurus proved to be a vengeful creature, chasing these humans through land and water until it was finally repelled by fire. What other dinosaurs in this franchise do you think are more dangerous than the Spinosaurus? I'd argue that raptors. Raptors are the most dangerous in this franchise because they freaking follow you inside and communicate and that kind of stuff. But the spider was like an unstoppable killing machine that hunted them the entire movie. Do you think we will see something truly stronger than the T-Rex, the Indominus, and the Spino? Let us know in the comments. I think we did. I think it was called the Indominus. Wait, you said that! Comments! Please make sure to subscribe to be the first to be notified when we drop the next video in this series. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Woo! That was a roller coaster, dude. That was freaking intense. I love these videos so much. Thank God for Koji said it. I wasn't. I, I, I did the best. I, I'll, I'll do better next time if I'm ever asked to do rolls. Okay. It's, it's hard knowing what it sounds like to die. But either way, thank you so much, Goji Center, for just existing and being awesome. Definitely subscribe to their channel down below. Leave a like, subscribe here too, and I'll see you next time. Peace.